In this episode of Country Boy Gas Garage, we're going to see if we can get the square body Chevy dump truck to run and maybe drive. So let's go. Welcome back to a new episode of Country Boy Gas Garage. Now I know it's been a while since we've had some fresh content, but in this video we're going to get the square body Chevy 4x4 to run and maybe drive. And it's been sitting here for about six years, so it hasn't ran that whole time. So let's give it a close look and see what we're working with here. Upon first inspection though, I can tell you it's full of spiders. Uh, just uh, walking around the truck, they're everywhere. Uh, let me show you. Just standing here in the grass, uh, I had a few of them getting on me. Uh, they seem to be everywhere. Whoop, there it goes. Yeah, so this is gonna be fun. Another one. And after uh, taking a look at this thing, it's not that bad. Um, it's uh, been parked here for about six years, at least it was last tagged um, about six years ago. And I'm not sure what the issue is, but we're gonna take a closer look at it. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what year yet either. I know they made these body styles, you know, from the 70s all the way to the early 90s. Um, so I have to figure that out. This is the, the K30, the Custom Deluxe. So this is the, I believe, one ton, you know, four wheel drive. It's got the eight lug axles. And this one is loaded. It's got the stainless steel rims. Um, Nice grill, brush guard, chrome stainless steel visor, lots of goodies. Well, we're going to see if we can get it running and driving. It's got a full load of trash. It's been back there for years, so we'll see if that dump bed will even work. Yeah, these spiders are everywhere, and they're huge. Yeah. They're probably harmless, but I still don't want them on me. But this is a pretty cool truck, and it'd be nice to get it running and driving again. And I don't really see any damage to it. Now, it looks like they may have high-centered it here on the running board, um, but there's not much body damage or rust. And I bet you that paint would shine up pretty good, too. Well, why don't we open her up and take a look inside and hopefully it's got keys in there. You know, some stuff in here, it looks like. This is a, a brake bleeder kit package, so Maybe it had some brake issues. I see some brake fluid over there. Hmm. I'm leaning towards brake issue. And is this a rat's nest in here? Looks like it could be. There's a mouse house for sure. I'll have to get that out of here. Yeah. It's a four speed. Four wheel drive. So we got the stereo in it. And the AC. We got a tack. 
It's equipped with some trailer brakes. We got two tanks, but it says use left tank only. Good to know. Yeah, not too bad. Pretty clean. Shouldn't take much to clean it up. Any keys? Oh no, no keys. No keys. Oh, there they are. Ooh, I think they've been there for a while. Hopefully those are them. Ew. All right. Well, that's one step in the right direction. Now well, this this core. Oh, this must uh must control the dump bed. So, well, if we get this thing running and driving, we might have to give that thing a test. Do a will it dump video. All right, maybe we should pop the hood and see what we're looking at here. There it is. This brush guard it makes it really hard to get in there all right let me sit you guys down for a sec all right let's see if we can't get this to open let's see what we're working with here the brush guard really makes it pain Obviously, we're having a latch issue here. Oh, aha. There we go. Right, let's see what we got. Wasp nests, spiders, and a big block Chevy, and some mouse house. Oh, we got a little of everything here. All right, we got some uh, angry wasps here looking up for their nests. Uh, we'll have to spray them in a sec and get rid of all these wasp nests. We got a bunch of spiders, some mouse house, but I believe this is a 454 big block Chevy and it looks all complete with AC, power steering. There's a battery even. There's power brakes. Yeah, well let's get rid of these bees and uh, we'll go from there. And you, and you, I think that's all of them, for now, I'll keep this nearby. Alright, they're dead now, now we can move on. Now one thing I do notice is the air cleaner is not set on there tight, and so I'm afraid there's probably plenty of uh, 
mouse house inside there. We'll have to check out. Hopefully it's not down in the carburetor. Man, as I'm looking under here, this thing is so complete. It still has the factory jack and tire irons under here. Uh, hopefully that AC works. That'd be nice. Yeah, I can tell somebody's been in here. There's some uh, things disconnected. But uh, I guess next we'll check the oil. Make sure it's got oil in there. Oh, man, that smoke is really starting to move back in. You know, it was only a couple weeks ago we were getting near to being evacuated due to a Cedar Creek forest fire. And then we had some cooler weather and some rain, which helped uh, damper it down and keep it from advancing towards us. But uh, the smoke's starting to file back in today. So it's just a reminder that the fire is still burning. It's about 30 miles up the highway from here. Um, as long as it doesn't come this way, we should be fine. Here's the oil dipstick here. Well, it showed some on there. It's pretty low though. Oh, it's full. Right to the full level. All right. I suppose we could pull that air cleaner off and see what it's looking like under there. Okay, not too bad. Doesn't look like any mice got in there. That's good. Huge filter. Now there's uh, evidence of water being inside there with that rust. So hopefully that didn't get down in the carburetor. I didn't see any water in the oil, so hopefully not. Now it looks like some more mouse house down underneath of it, I can see. So we're still not done there. It's got an HEI distributor, so we don't have to worry about points. So it should have spark. And we just got to make sure that that gas isn't bad that's in the tank or maybe uh, run our own fuel line until we find out for sure. But, uh, I'm sure the battery's probably dead too, so I should probably put a charge battery in here and uh, maybe give it a crank and see if the motor's locked up or if it'll turn over. I did notice that it is missing the AC belt, so no air conditioning. Hopefully that belt doesn't fall apart. All right, well, let's pull that old battery out of here. You know, I noticed that it's uh, got some side post uh, ground strap with an adapter there. And what appears to have had a small fire or melting issue at some point. So that might need to be addressed. And the positive side is crudely adapted to a top post terminal. Um, uh, so, well, let's get this apart and get it out of here and see if we can't clean these ends up and make them work with our battery. Alright, well, I suppose we should probably try to replace that ground strap right there. Um, let's try to get this side off. I suppose I could put this, uh, battery on my charger. And see if we can't get a charge out of it while we have the other battery in here. I wonder what the speaker wire went to. <laughs> hey. Must have been a battery hold down. <laughs> yeah. Battery box is a little chewy. All right, let's get that other battery in here. Let 
use the Optima battery out of the Nova. Should be fully charged. But I think before I make these connections, I am going to go get me a piece of wire and replace that section of negative ground wire. It's just going to the core support, but it looks like it needs replaced. So we'll do that and then we'll connect them and we'll go from there. wiring stuff here all right well I made this piece this section of wire with the end on it I'm just gonna cut this one off down here where it's still good and uh, splice them together and we'll be done with that now kind of curious of why this happened and Hopefully we don't have an electrical issue. You know, a ground strap was disconnected and this obvious has gotten hot before. So we'll see. Probably made it a little longer than I needed to, but uh, I guess that's better than having it too short. Barely reaches. Ooh. So it looks like the side post is just bolted into this top post. <clears throat> See if it works. any sparks or smoke that's good it barely reaches I wonder if I spin this battery around I could get those terminals a little closer Battery cables got a zip tie holding it down here. Move that, I might get a little more slack out of it. 
I can hear some sparkage. So there's something drawing power. Uh -huh. So far, I don't see any smoke or fire. Now before I crank it, I would like to disconnect the fuel line in case we got bad fuel in there, but I just want to see if we get dash lights or what have you. Because it's not looking like we got lights or any kind of dash lights with the key on. Probably get this mouse house out of here. There might be mice in there, I don't even know. Well, my curiosity is killing me. I'm gonna put in the clutch and crank the key. Put in the clutch. <clears throat> put in the clutch. Okay, well, that's not good. Pretty sure we're neutral. And we got nothing. And the clutch is stiff as a board. So, we got multiple issues going on here. You know, first thing, we gotta figure out, well, I'm sitting on broken glass, that's not good. Let me get this mess cleaned up out of here and hopefully there's no mice. And then we'll start checking out why there's no electrical, you know, check the fuse panels and fuses and check these cords a little closer and see what's going on. Brake bleeder. Yeah, here's the brake bleeder kit. And what looks like to be a power brake booster or a master cylinder for the brakes. Yeah, hydraulic brake booster with brake bleeder. So. We've got brake issues, I'm pretty sure. Uh, what is this? Bunch of brake fluid. Brake fluid. What is it? New brakes. And that's an old, old master cylinder. So it looks like maybe they put a new master cylinder and hydraulic brake booster on it and then bled the brakes if we should be so lucky well so what i just finished doing was uh taking this all apart and cleaning everything and putting it back together um ultimately what it needs is new ends but uh i'm just working with what i got here um see if that helped any we'll put the key in and turn the ignition and See if we have any power here. Nothing. Well, no headlights. Actually. I got one running light. It's a small sign of life. Yeah, I got tail lights there. 
Yeah. No horn. Oh, we got a fan. No stereo. No hazards. So I should probably check the fuse panel and uh, see. Plus, if I can't move the clutch, the, that might keep me from starting the neutral safety switch or what have you. And the clutch being frozen is not helping. Oh, that's the brakes. Oh man. Well, let me check out the fuse panel and see if I can't uh, figure out what's going on here. All right, the lights are still on and I've turned them off. Lights are off. Yet we still have lights. So, if that's not an indication of some issues, uh, I don't know what is. I wonder if the mice chewed through some wires. Well, I'm going to have to dig in a little deeper and see what's going on here. Okay, guys. Well, I gave the, the clutch pedal a nice little stomp and it broke free. We got clutch pedal. Well, let's see. Give this a try again. Oh, it cranked. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to disconnect the fuel from the carburetor before we crank it too much so we don't suck up any bad gas in there. And uh, we'll see what's coming out of that fuel line before we actually hook it back into the carburetor. If it looks good enough, we'll just put some fresh gas in the tank and run it that way. But if it's coming out pretty bad looking, then we'll probably have to run a separate tank um, for the meantime anyway. Uh, let's get the rest of that uh, air cleaner off of there. Take a look and see what we're working with there. Mice have definitely been in here. It's full of mice poop. And there's a little mouse house there. And that Edelbrock looks pretty crusty. Hopefully that thing's not all frozen up. Well, I should probably start spraying some penetrating fluid on some of these uh, levers and stuff and hopefully we'll be able to get that fuel line out without any problems. Well, let me get the penetrating fluid. All right, got a little PB blaster on some of this and uh, it's not locked up, it's moving. Um, definitely see some uh, vacuum lines that have been chewed through so we're definitely gonna have a vacuum leak until we get those taken care of, but uh, I think I should be able to take off this fuel line and replace it with a new filter here, and, uh, and then we'll try cranking it over and see what kind of fuel comes out of there. Hopefully it's clean. All right, we got the fuel line just running into this plastic water bottle uh, so we can kind of catch what comes out and see what we're looking at. If anything comes out, it could be empty, which could be a bonus probably as well. We'll just uh, put gas in there and see if we can't get gas flowing through here. Otherwise, I could just uh, put a little bit in the carb um, and see if she fires up. I'm going to give her a quick crank and see what comes out of that uh, fuel line.
nothing came out, did it? And it could be a good sign. You know, I'm just gonna I'm gonna spray a little uh, carb cleaner right in the carburetor and uh, see if she'll pop off. She's ready to run. Look like we got a little something came out of the fuel line too. Try that again. Oh, she's definitely ready to run. And, uh, well, it's not the prettiest, but it's not the worst. Um, let me pull that off there and kind of take a closer look. It doesn't smell too bad. Alright, got the fuel line hooked back up with a new carburetor. I'm not positive that that fuel is going to be any good and I'm not very confident in that carburetor either it looks pretty rough but uh well let's give it a try and see what happens all right let's give it a try Island guys. Sounds good, even with all those vacuum leaks. Fuel doesn't look that bad. I got a little fuel leak right there, it's dripping. A fuel leak, vacuum leak. But she's running. Fired up pretty good. I don't see any smoke, no engine noise. Man, she sounds good. Well, we might need to put a little more fresh fuel in there so we don't run her out. And go over a few things with the electrical. I still gotta figure out those lights and what's going on there. I'm having to disconnect the battery just to kill the power to the lights. So let's look into that a little bit and uh, we'll fix a few odds and ends and uh, Maybe we'll try to take this thing for a drive. Now I have to check out that clutch and those brakes, but maybe we'll give this thing a drive. Well, I was gonna attempt to put some fresh fuel in there, but the way this filler neck is oriented, uh, it comes out such at an angle that uh, I can't get gas can to it. Um, it's tucked up underneath here um, and it's pretty rigid. I guess because of the dump bed, it can't come up through here like it looked like it originally did, but I mean with a fuel pump nozzle you can get it in there and blast it, but I can't get a gas can in there unless I had a crazy long funnel, which I don't have. But uh, I was looking and it says it has about, uh, well, over a quarter tank, if that's accurate. 
So we may just have to drive on what's in there. I did fix the fuel leak. It was just a little drip that was on that fuel line. And I tried to repair and replace any of those vacuum lines I could. Uh, I'm still thinking we have a vacuum leak, but uh, better than it was. And put the air cleaner back on there. Um, I suppose I should probably check the brakes. Let's see. Oh. Yeah, the front one is dry. Or not dry, but empty. So, well, I guess I'll attempt to top that off and hopefully that'll work. Uh, I did check the coolant level and it was plumb full and looks good so that I think we're good to go there. Um, so I'll get some brake fluid and we'll top off that master cylinder. Well, once I get that master cylinder topped off I'll start it back up and see how she's running. Maybe check for brakes and man, we might be able to go for a drive. Yeah. All right guys, I topped off the brake fluid. Uh, let's go ahead and start her up and see how she's running. Well, she's running a little rough, but it's still cold. So let's give her a minute to warm up and see how she does. Not too bad. Especially because that's pretty old gas. But she's running idling good. I'm gonna let her warm up for a sec and check those brakes. Maybe see if it's got a clutch. Hopefully we'll be able to drive this thing. Well, that brake pedal does not feel right. I could hear that drain on the motor when I apply the brakes hard. You know, this braking system is all new to me. It's a hydraulic booster. A hydraulic brake booster, which is ran off the power steering pump. And when I apply the brakes, I could hear that power steering pump bog down the motor. Hmm. Uh, made her a little stumbly. checking the fuel filter to make sure it's still got fuel and it's hard to see but yeah it's still full but you know that is old gas and that carburetor looks pretty funky and it sounds like we've got a vacuum leak and now the truck's not very happy after giving it some gas now that she's warming up
I did check the power steering fluid and it was full so that shouldn't be an issue but carburetor and fuel might be our problem right now and then we'll deal with those brakes you know before we go too much farther I want to check that clutch I'm gonna put it in gear and see if she'll move as if we're hung up guys it doesn't want to move let me show you I don't know if the brakes are locked up um, or what but if I get it in low give it some gas and let it that clutch and it just wants to not move oh. the whole truck is lurching but we're not going anywhere I think the we've got a hung up brake. We're gonna have to take a look at these brakes, I think. Oh man. Alright. Well, now we know what we gotta do next. We gotta figure out what's hanging up. I think it's uh the brakes are locked up somewhere. Um you brakes off. We're in too high. Low gear there. And it does not want to go. All right. Well, let's investigate. brakes free it's rolling now I'm pretty sure if we're gonna drive this thing I'm gonna have to tarp this load because I'm just gonna lose all of this garbage everywhere um, so I'm gonna have to take a moment to get this thing tarped up and then we'll go for a drive All right, guys, now it's the next day, and guess what? It rained. Now, it's not the best weather for making videos, but uh, with all the forest fires nearby, um, I ain't mad. Um, we needed the rain, so I did get the truck all covered last night, and you now I was a little concerned with that gas, so let me show you what I did. Yeah, so uh, my concern with that gas, I went ahead and rigged up uh, a funnel, um, just an old heater hose and a funnel, and wired it up there and ran it down. Um, and I added uh, five gallons of premium fuel with some uh, fuel additive too. So hopefully we won't have an issue with the fuel. And hopefully we don't have an issue with those brakes. But we're going to fire this thing up, let it warm up, and we're going to take it for its first drive in many years. Once we start driving this thing, my first concern is making this first turn. And it's a sharp turn as it is in this big old truck to make this corner to get out of here. So may have to go off-roading a bit but you know it is a four-wheel drive dually big block Chevy I'm sure she'll handle it so let's get this thing fired up warmed up we'll take her for a drive
she seems to be driving pretty good. I barely even touched the brake yet though. I'm kind of afraid to touch the brakes that they'll lock up on us. But other than that, she's doing good. I'm gonna take it for a little spin. Yeah, it's definitely going to need a brake job, or at least gone through, but we're going to have to save that for the next video. We'll also see if that dump bed will work as well, maybe even a pressure wash. So stay tuned for that video, guys. All right guys, we did it. Another successful revive and drive. Now we'll probably do some more videos on this truck in the future. You know, I'd like to get it all cleaned up and see if that dump bed still works. And the brakes need to be squared away as well. Plus, we do have a new project car coming to the channel soon, so make sure to keep a lookout for that and stay tuned for those videos. We got a lot of new fresh content coming. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, you like, comment, and share with your friends. Until next time, peace.